Hey everybody, welcome to Stephen Inc.'s Fake Pen Summer, and oh my goodness, I have been waiting for this video. I can't wait to tell you what I think of the Majan A1, one of the most blatant ripoffs in this video series about ripoff pens, a clear copy of the Pilot Vanishing Point, um, which is a high end, and for some people, this is even a grail pen, the vanishing point that is, um, and it's never been, anything like it has never been offered at this low of a price point. Um, this A1 is about one third the price of the gold nibbed um, vanishing point, uh, which of course this is a steel nib, uh, and even the steel nib version of the vanishing point, which is the Pilot Capless, I believe it's called, is still about twice, a little more than twice the price of this pen. So it is a budget option if you don't care about the intellectual um, property aspect of it. I personally am conflicted. I really only bought this pen uh, because I was very curious about it and it was part of this series that we're doing. So. We're gonna see how it works and see what it makes me think. Um, this is gonna be really interesting. I can't wait to share it with you. Let's get started. Here we have the pen. Um, it's a nice matte black texture. It's not overly textured and at the same time, it's not super smooth. So it feels like something that if it were to get warm in your hands, you wouldn't um, have it slipping and sliding around. I like that. Um, I am aware that the Vanishing Point makes something in almost the exact same finish. So, um, you know, good job Pilot. But then also, this is the um, Majan A1, but it says Moon Man on the side. Uh, this company keeps changing its name. So probably uh, for some sort of intellectual property rights violation issues. Uh, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, it's got a nice little clip. The clip is a bit springy. Uh, you can see the hole is set up so that when you pop the nib, it can only come out one way. It's kind of a triangular shaped um, hole there. So it needs to align exactly uh, how it came in. Um, but there's a mechanism for um, making sure that that happens, which is cool. Um, this is the back end. Interestingly enough, this has got a little spring in it and the main body also has a spring in it so i don't know if these double springs mean anything uh, to making it work well but there you go and uh, this is what i was talking about there's this groove in the metal where and the tolerances are pretty good it doesn't wiggle around much so when you align the nib it can only be that way so that it goes through and if it's off by a little bit it doesn't even poke down so you're not going to damage the nib and you can't misalign it um, it's impossible to do so so that's cool um this is the main action of the pen right here. This is the uh, all the mechanical parts. You could see it's got this nib. It's quite long, and it's on this feed right here. And um, I would imagine this looks somewhat like a vanishing point. I I still really uh, want to get a vanishing point. Um, so this is kind of only convincing me of that. Uh, this little metal sleeve comes off, and what you have here is kind of an empty. Uh, plastic cartridge and the the uh, pen came with this you can see what's included inside is a um, a converter that looks surprisingly like a sailor converter and just like a sailor converter it can uh, completely detach and disassemble which is again it's kind of cool for uh, those of us who like to uh, keep our pens ma maintained very well. Um, just uh, people who who um, like to grease up their converters. Um, and it comes with a couple more of these little plastic tubey thingies and a little tiny pipette. How adorable is that? I would prefer to use my... Um, my uh, blunt needle syringe to uh, fill this pen up, but uh, if you don't have one, it does give you everything you need to use these little capsules. And I am going to use this because it's unique. Uh, I have a feeling that this converter is gonna fill just the way a converter normally fills, so let's do the interesting one. So we're gonna put this together and we're gonna see um, how we can fill it up with some ink. All right, 
Since it was known from the beginning that I was gonna use my blunt needle syringe to fill up this pen, I thought I might go with something where I can't fill it with a regular pen anyway. I have to use the blunt needle syringe. This is from my sample of the Diatramon Document Ink series. You could check that video out on this channel. Um, it's a, a really nice ink. It's also waterproof. So if I decide, no promises, but if I decide to use a little watercolor with today's drawing, I might give you guys that little treat um, if I have enough time. And just a reminder, this comes out by pulling this little metal shaft. And um, from there, we have this little plastic. And it's going to fill just like it if you were filling an empty cartridge. Some people do that uh, who do not like um, using a converter or paying extra for a converter if one's not included. Uh, you do get a little bit more ink. Um, oh, uh-oh. It's too much has been used. So what I do here, and this is uh, dangerous if you don't like spilling ink on everything, but you're gonna pull it to the side, get the needle in there. You see how the needle goes right to the edge where that ink is. I'm gonna draw while I tilt. And that should be more than enough to fill up this uh, little cartridge. The rest I can pour back in. So here we go. That's about as much as I wanna fill it. And only a couple of drops left over there. Okay, so um, from there, we're gonna put this back on the, um, if I can find it, uh, the feed here. Simple, nice. And then the metal um, fitting over the top. And we're just gonna put this back in the pen and we're gonna start doing some drawings here. Cool. So let's do some art test lines with this pen. Um, still love that clicking action. I notice when I hold this pen, I don't hold my pens exactly straight with my fingers. I kind of put this finger over the front. Maybe that's for manipulating and moving fine movements while I'm still moving with my shoulder. I don't know. So there's some and maybe I'll get used to it. I'll let you know when we do the drawing sample, but there's some discomfort with this clip being here. So interesting. You can actually order this pen without the clip. And now I kind of, um, I almost wish I had, but then I would not know that this is uncomfortable because I would imagine that the vanishing point would also be uncomfortable like that uh, for me as well. So uh, let's we'll just start with a little bit of hatching. Um, I like the thin line. It's consistent. Uh, it's, it's a little toothy, but it is an extra fine, um, nib. So of course it's going to be a bit toothy. Uh, I got no notes on how smooth this thing is. That's really nice. Um, let's do a little bit of forward and with a little more pressure, I can get some darker lines. Good. And then let's try a little bit of Reverse, okay, there's definitely, put it up to the front so you could see, there's definitely a difference between forward and reverse. Uh, reverse is a little scratchy. Not unusable, but there you go. Okay, some shapes. This is the pen that I was most thinking that I would enjoy, and so I'm really a little disappointed that this clip thing is gonna get in the way of some of that enjoyment. Um, again, maybe I'll get used to it. I feel like I already am getting used to it. So I'll give a full report later on towards the end of the video after I've had more time. This is literally the first time I have used this pen with ink. So it's dry. Not as dry as the Keras XL Starliner, which was too dry for my taste although I did uh, manage to get it to work a little more um, more wet um, after playing with it. So there's that. But yeah, uh, I think it's dry to the level that I like it. I feel like I could use this on some cheap paper and still end up with a pretty decent uh, response here. So.
with repeated hatching, pens keeping up with me. And I'm not getting a lot of um, a lot of like blobbing or any kind of um, nib creep or anything like that. So that's nice. Um, I feel like I could take this somewhere. This strong pen is kind of sturdy, made of decent metal, and yeah, it just feels like a like a solid workhorse type pen. Something if I had a um, an actual what's it called, uh, an actual vanishing point. I would never take it to uh, the school where I work. That would be a silly thing for me to do, to take a gold nib pen out. But I would take this. Um, I would take this to school. Super convenient to be able to just engage without having to untwist a cap. A lot of the best fountain pens are twist caps. There's a good philosophy behind that because uh, some of those uh, slip and seal mechanisms don't last forever, so you have one, it's super convenient, but then later it breaks. You want to not be crying over it. I don't cry for, about my pens. I'm just kidding, sometimes I do. Uh, but this one seems like it's not giving me something to cry about at all. So yeah, I like this. Okay, so gonna gonna give you guys a little bit of summer art advice. And this is advice for all seasons really, but you know, it's summertime, so let me give you something appropriate with summer. Draw from nature. First, even if you draw things that are not natural, like you draw fantasy art, you draw dragons and creatures of the night, um, you like to draw zombies, There's, all of that stuff is based on natural phenomenon, things that you might um, learn how to draw from looking at them in real life. Um, something as simple as plants, um, trees, the animals that you might have at your house if you've got pets. But go somewhere else too. Go to the zoo. Go to um, a park. Go traveling somewhere where you can find some natural things that you can draw from. And then when you get to like the stylistic stuff where you're drawing something that's in a particular style, it's all grounded in nature. It's all grounded in the original thing that's out there. So everything in the world is just an imitation of or a rejection of nature. Everything in art is kind of that way. So have a look at what's outside in nature, and uh, I hope you get some sunshine as well. Let's draw. Right, so I had this like, concept, and you can see I go back and forth and try and do it in a couple of ways, um, of just a, a little summer creature enjoying a summery drink. So um, I did some cocktail research, and I think I found something that would work really well. Speaking of works really well, this pen works really well. Uh, it kept up the entire time. Um, it does seem to have a thicker line in the drawing application than when I first pulled it out, but um, it sort of settled into a nice kind of um, medium fine uh, line weight, as you can see in this drawing. Worked pretty well. Um, I went, I went ahead with this drawing as a regular pen and ink drawing and it's not on watercolor paper so my initial plan to do a watercolor I just was going to do this um, and that's the drawing but then I decided maybe I'll go back and I'll do the same drawing and I'll try it with colors because this would be really cool as a bright colorful tropical drink thing um, and a fun little summer drawing. I've got to say, I think I prefer the pen and ink version, not because uh, colors are a bad idea, but just because my execution wasn't that great. And I thought it would be interesting just for, you know, honesty purposes to include the painting and talk about some of the ways that I'd like to grow as a painter, some of my future goals. I've never been great with colors, 
and um, as you can see there's a lot of me mixing the colors around and just trying to figure out how to get the color that I want um, and even then not it's not exactly what I'm trying to get I just kind of end up with what I've got um, those of you who paint with watercolors interesting is you can watch things dry on a time lapse I can see some of the mistakes I made uh, in that I should be waiting a little bit for things to dry. Um, I should be testing and swatching my colors out beforehand so I know what colors I'm putting down. But I really just kind of went for it. And the end result is, uh, it's okay. Um, but again, I, I thought it would be uh, cool of me to um, just put this out there and let you see my work when it's not 100% wonderful. Um, it's not what I wanted to make, but it's something. So uh, here's something. And he, I, I've already done talking about the pen because I have uh, haven't been using it for any amount of time. We're just uh, painting with brushes and paints and things. Um, I hope you like it. I hope you guys are having a great summer. Man, we've gone through a lot of videos together. Uh, I can't wait to show you the last one which is, um, you know, coming up uh, not too far away. Um, anyway, that's all my thoughts on the painting, on the pen, and all that stuff. Okay, the Mahjan A1, final thoughts. I love it. I love this pen. I think it's super cool. I didn't even want a vanishing point until I had this. And the thing about it is, though, it makes me want a vanishing point. I wish I had that. I feel like I would always kind of want to just cover up where it says Moon Man right there because it's embarrassing to have a copy of such an iconic pen that is, I mean, that's clearly what they're doing and you can see videos of other YouTubers who have both the A1 and a vanishing point. The tolerances are the exact same. You can swap out the parts. This is, this pen is a crime. Uh -huh. So I have this, I love it, it's very good, but I kind of want to support Pilot and their intellectual property and the fact that they have this fantastic pen that's existed for a long time. So eventually I will be buying a uh, Vanishing Point and you will get to see the review of that video and I'll at least hold on to this pen for that long to um, make sure that I can compare the two and see what the similarities and differences are uh, because I don't own one right now. Um, but I've got to say, this is a real tempting buy, even if you have, like me, uh, issue with some of these pens that just straight up copy another design, even though you know they are not trying to pass it off as Pilot, they do have their logo right there and you can see that it's, um, it's not a Pilot. At the same time, uh, there's still that conflict because you know what this is supposed to be. Um, anyway, uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this pen if you own it or if you have any thoughts about um, my feelings on intellectual property and, and um, Pilot's right to this design. Um, please send me some comments, send me some love, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I will see you in the next video.